Acting. What is it? Better yet, what does it mean to act well? To be a good actor? Is it to know how to cry on cue? Or is it yelling loudly? We'll see, but first you need to understand that acting is a simple profession that's easy to pick up, but is extremely difficult to master. It requires a lot of patience, dedication, hard work, and talent to make it in this game. Or I guess you could just be a famous TikTok star and get cast in whatever you want. But seriously, when we talk about acting, good acting that is, what are the things that come to mind? What do you picture in your head when I say those words? Maybe this. Don't you swear at me, you little shit! Don't you ever raise your voice at me! I am your mother! A little bit of this. Two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Rushing or dragging? Rushing. So you do know the difference! Some of this. I can't believe I have to know you forever! Oh, you're fucking insane! That's probably it, right? Notice anything in common between these scenes? They're all raging, yelling, crying. But why? Why do we immediately associate scenes like these with the pinnacle of what being a good actor is all about? That is the question I want to answer today. Let's go. So first off, I'm not talking about what good acting is in this video. Well, maybe a little bit, but that's not the point of the video. The point here is to try and figure out why scenes like these especially are thought to be the greatest acting. When in reality, good acting can come in many forms. Sometimes the best of it comes in just little reactions without even so much as one word. And sometimes great acting comes from withholding rage instead of letting it all out. Although to be fair, most of the time it ends up coming out at some point in the film anyway. But anyways, let's give an example. I think we should start off here. Breaking Bad. I want to dissect it. So let's see. Breaking Bad is a show about a man who thinks he's a failure, can't provide for his family and can't treat his cancer lost out on the best time of his life and made the biggest mistake when he sold his share in what came to be a giant company later on. That's where the idea of making meth comes from, wanting to prove that he's something more. More than that random high school chemistry teacher that peaked when he started a company with his best friends that he ended up selling his shares from and losing out on. Now we can all agree basically that by the end of the show, the real villain is nobody but Walter White. God damn right. That is shown in bits throughout the early seasons, but really comes full circle in the ending. Then you got this scene midway through season 4, just as Walter White is about to kill Gus Fring, who's basically a drug lord. This is just about the most popular scene that came out of that show. A scene where Skyler calls Walter out on his bullshit and tries to get him to stop. Confess. Maybe he'll be forgiven. A school teacher with cancer, forced to find a way to treat it and help his family. A weak man who was desperate. It is that kind of belittling as Walter saw it that offended him so freaking badly. He finally blew up. This right here is where he finally transforms. Everything before. Tiny little changes here and there, but this is where he, as we say, turned into ultimate form. And he burst out on Skylar claiming that he's not in danger. He's not the one that should be scared. They are. Walter thought of himself as much more than a desperate man trying to help his family at this point, and it killed him that Skylar didn't see that. Now this is definitely a scene that's looked at as the pinnacle of acting. Maybe one of the best acted scenes in the show. And it's kind of a race scene, to an extent, but that's the important thing we need to differentiate. The reason this is viewed as a great scene isn't because he raged and showed a lot of emotion. It's because of all the pent-up anger and resentment, all the feeling of belittlement by everyone around him, coming full circle in this one two minute segment where he finally blows. A few episodes later in the finale, spoiler alert for this, he kills Gus Fring and essentially becomes him. But in my opinion, this segment only really pays off in the finale of the show, when Walter, now a destroyed, dying man on the run, a shell of his former self visits Skylar one last time, and finally admits why he did what he did. Finally admits that it was never about taking care of them, his family. It wasn't about treating his cancer. It was all about that feeling, that one powerful feeling that was essentially his own meth. Walter White never got high on his own supply, but he did get the high from making and selling it. When Skylar finally gets him to admit it, there's no rage, 
there's no anger. There's just a desperate, depressed man finally reacting and admitting the truth. I personally find this scene much more fulfilling from an acting point of view. The other one is probably much more fun to watch though. I'm personally not a very experienced actor, but I'm studying it a bit more and more. And one of my favorite acting techniques is by a guy named Sanford Meisner. Now, this is the point where the video gets pretty pretentious, so click off now if you don't like the pretentiousness and yeah. But I'll try to make it as little as possible. There's many different acting techniques out there and professors that taught them. Stanislavski, Strasberg, Chekhov, anybody who's learned a bit about acting would have at least heard of these guys. Meisner is another very popular one, and his method revolves around mainly focusing on the person in front of you, the actor in front of you, and reacting off of what they give you. A lot of actors get so caught up in their own character and how they're gonna build it and how they're gonna say their own lines, they forget to focus on the others, the ones they're doing their scenes with, and essentially the ones that matter most. One of the most simple exercises that you learn about this method is two people sitting in front of each other pointing out one thing about the other and the other actor answering with a verification of that fact. And they keep repeating that over and over and over again and noticing the little changes in expression that happen over the course of time when you're reacting to the other person. There you go, is that pretentious enough? I don't know, I thought that was like a seven on the scale. There are a lot of actors that are very out there in their performances. A lot of great movies involve a scene where a character breaks and blows up. Leonardo DiCaprio has plenty of those. But I feel like you can never truly appreciate these moments. Like you cannot really appreciate this scene in The Great Gatsby where Leonardo DiCaprio blows up in all outrage on his ex-lover's husband unless you've seen all the small ticks given from the ones around him that ultimately led to his obvious hidden anger issues to come out. I don't think you can appreciate the abuse scene from The Wolf of Wall Street if you haven't noticed the descent of Jordan Belfort for two whole hours. I don't think you can appreciate this panicky scene from Walter White when he finds out his wife gave his money to her ex if you haven't seen how hard he worked for it throughout the show and how much he desperately needed in that moment. Or that he can't keep getting away with this scene from Jesse Pinkman when he breaks down crying about Walter and now he's ruined everything for him. If you haven't seen everything Walter did to Jesse that led to this moment. There's a lot of these things and I can cover plenty more, but I think you get the picture. The reason why I think people see these kinds of scenes specifically as the greatest acting has to offer is because they're usually the big moment of release, made to be the best scene in a movie, usually around the climax. And after all the hardships and everything our protagonists had to face throughout the movie, these scenes usually have everything going for them, and they come at the perfect time. Plus, they're very loud, and our baboon brains like that, so we love them. You know, when I decided to make this video, I knew very little about acting. I stopped halfway through it and didn't come back to it until a year later. I don't know, I got bored or something. Anyway, since then, I've been a lot more interested in acting. I took plenty of acting classes, Read a lot of books. Meisner, huh? How about that callback? And even auditioned a bit. And I still feel like I know almost nothing about it. But the thing is, what I had in mind for this video was about one specific aspect of movies that people love so much. These scenes, and why we love them. And despite the fact that it took me like a 10 minute video to answer this very simple question, I think I came up with a satisfying answer. I'm proud of myself. And I hope you enjoyed this video. Like it if you did. And watch this video next if you love sports movies like I do.